Positive news on the Bloodlines front has been hard to come by recently, and I wanted to introduce you to a relatively new Bloodlines product that's actually good. We're certainly not talking about the long-awaited sequel, we're talking about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines Prelude. It is a mod by a bunch of passionate fans who've basically taken the original game and created something new out of it, a bit of a new adventure. I'll introduce you to some of the modders in a second, but essentially what Prelude is, is it shows the events that lead up to the story of the original game. It has new characters, it has brand new areas, missions, enemies to explore and conquer. One of the modders involved, you may not know his name, Wesp5, but you may be familiar with his work, because when Bloodlines 1 came out 20 years ago, it was a bit of a shambles. Most fans knew there was a hidden gem there, but it released in a pretty sorry state. It was rushed out the door by Activision, Troika, the studio who worked on it, they were obviously very passionate about this RPG. They put a lot of work into it, but they were forced to get it out early, much earlier than it was actually ready. So it was very buggy, content was simply missing. Even content they've created and it's ready to go, they just didn't have time to get it into the game and get it working. So what West 5 has done over the years is try and fix that. The game has been far more polished thanks to him, and he's even gotten some of that content that was there but not playable. He's gotten it all working so he can actually enjoy it. I believe the GOG version of Vampire Bloodlines 1 actually comes with Wesp 5's unofficial patches installed, preloaded, ready to go. So many of us who've played the game through GOG, enjoyed it, had a positive time. It is thanks to Wesp in part, because Activision never did anything. They couldn't give a toss. So it is all thanks to Wesp that we've been able to enjoy the game the way it is now in 2023. And he's not done. He's working with other team members on this prelude series. It's an episodic mod, so it's not all ready to go now. Part 1 is actually available. You can play it through, and then there's a demo for Part 2, Episode 2, and there'll be more to come. The full release of Episode 2, and I believe in Episode 3 as well. And we're talking new hubs, again, new content, brand new content to explore. Kind of a new game in some regards, just with the same old engine, the same assets that you've enjoyed. And we're going to jump into a video... And in this video, the team explains that Modder Enten Shrek created multiple levels for the unofficial patch for Bloodlines and then started work on a prelude. And in this prelude, in this prequel, originally they wanted the player character to be the Bloodline Sire, but they didn't want there to be an unavoidable death. So basically they changed that, and the prelude player who you actually play as it's going to be a hunter who is embraced by the Bloodlines Sire. And as they say here, there's brand new maps for the mod. And some of the maps look really, really good, like this one, this Chateau Hotel. This was created before this prelude mod, but it, it looks fantastic. And you can also explore it as well. You can go through here. There's a full exterior, a full interior. So you can go in here, you can investigate you can interact. There is also a hub world where you can take on missions. We can see here that the game sends you to a quest on an oil rig that's been overrun by forces of evil. It looks like a really nice time. I'm looking forward to being able to dive into it, perhaps when that second episode releases, perhaps earlier. Given the state of Bloodlines 2, I think a lot of us are just looking for that next fix of a quality vampire RPG. It doesn't have to be the Masquerade, just any sort of vampire game that is quality, that is a role-playing game. And this looks like it could be some of that for us. That first part that's released... Not super long, but apparently this was said by Wesp, that modder himself, just the other day. That the second part is looking fantastic. The hub world of the second episode is meant to be really, really good. So I'm looking forward to it. It'll be nice if we're able to kick the official Bloodlines 2 to the curb somewhat. If fans are releasing something that's actually better, despite not even getting paid for it. This is a passion project, a passion effort. 
That's it for the Bloodline side of things, but I do want to show you some other games coming in 2024. These are also made with passion. They're by indie dev teams who want to release quality role-playing games without any of the garbage, any predatory monetization practices. And the first one we'll jump into, Prometheus Wept. It's a turn-based RPG. And we've got some concept art here, and this developer is on an RPG forum talking about this game. So he's being very open, mentions that this game offers squad-level combat and simultaneous battles between cyberspace and the physical world. And you can see some of it in these screenshots here. The cyberspace component, that's actually really, really cool. And if we bring up the trailer for a second... And you can see some examples of cyberspace here. It looks relatively interesting. The combat itself looks relatively in-depth, judging by the interface and what's kind of going on. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to come out, but it could be next year. It could be relatively soon. We can see here the character screen, and it's relatively complex. If you're a fan of the older Fallout games, the Infinity Engine games, like the Baldur's Gates, Planescape Torments from the 90s, early 2000s. This could be something for you. It, it's not just the usual RPG stats in the modern era of maybe strength, maybe persuasion, a couple of others. It does have a lot more. You can see sort of specializing in firearms, explosives, medicine, pre-virus society. That's a, a fairly interesting one. So it's not just your standard sword and sorcery RPG. And I do really like when developers do look at other settings for RPGs outside of sort of Lord of the Rings, that sort of fantasy. They do do something different, as we've seen with cyberspace and that post-apocalyptic style. I'm going to show you a game now called Call of Sarignar, and my Australian accent might be butchering that pronunciation. I'm glad the spelling's actually there in the bottom left for me. This is a game that's been in development since 2016, and I remember when I first saw it, it sounded really ambitious from a solo dev, and I thought, yeah, this will be something that sounds cool, but in a year or two it'll disappear from the face of the earth. That happens a lot, it happens with mods, it happens with these solo dev projects, even bigger team projects as well, where they announce a game, they get a lot of positive feedback, and then you just never hear about it again. It's a shame, but you can kind of understand. These people are putting in unpaid work. They're only ever going to be able to turn it into a career if they actually release it. People buy it and they can actually start their own for-profit studio unless they really get funding. Which I imagine is very difficult for a, a niche genre like the CRPG space. But this dev, he has been committed. He stuck to it. Seven, eight years later, he's still going with it. He is still improving this game. And this trailer is from this year. Again, it started in 2016. But I can see so many improvements here from what we first saw. So we'll bring this up. The environments look gorgeous. It's an older school sort of style of 3D. But if we look at this, for instance, if we just jump back slightly... This character, I believe this style, they hire actors and they almost digitally recreate their faces in this pixelated style. Maybe an artist can tell me what the right term is, but you can just see it. It doesn't look like the typical 2000s era of 3D where it's all blocky, it's all a bit weird. This looks fantastic. This art style just works. Kind of channeled my inner Todd Howard there. But this game, it was inspired by a 90s RPG. A great one, Betrayal at Crondor. Popular at the time, based on a great book series. And that game was open world. It was kind of like Elder Scrolls in some ways before the Elder Scrolls series in terms of that exploration. But has a lot of those hardcore RPG elements that you would expect from a mid-90s game. So we'll keep going with this because it does look really good. We can see the map there and, and it does look quite large interface very old school we can see skills we can see what i believe was magic and again the environments are just gorgeous the art style it, it suits what they're doing we can see different times of the day 
the combat even, I know I mentioned Elder Scrolls, but the combat, it's not like Elder Scrolls at all. It's tile-based, as we can see, strategic combat, or I believe it is turn-based, and that just adds even more depth, that we get this great world, but we potentially get in-depth combat as well. The music's also really good. I'll make sure I have this on for this video because it's nice. Uh, I've heard some tracks posted over the years and they always just sound really good. The release date you may not be able to see here, but they say it's coming when it's done, when it's ready. They're not just going to push this out. Outside of self-funding, they do have a Patreon, so they've been getting a little bit of money over the years, but at the end of the day, they're doing this of their own free will. No one's paying them for this. They're doing it because they clearly love old-school RPGs. We're fortunate for that. I hope the final product really lives up to what they've promised and what they've shown, because... Everything looks great, and again, I can't believe they're still at it. Seven, eight years later, improving it. I hope that this comes out. Another one for you. This is King's Vein. It's a tactical RPG from a developer who's released a number of indie games in the last little while. This one looks really interesting from an art style's perspective. So we can see this one certainly isn't 3D environments. It is... 2D, it looks like something that could have been on a, a 90s console, but it, it's tactical, the combat's quite tactical, but the exploration is kind of like a Metroidvania, apparently, so it could be quite an interesting world to explore. The art style, quite unique, I'm liking what I'm seeing from enemy models, the setting itself very unique from an RPG. I, I mentioned earlier that I certainly like role-playing games where it's not purely traditional fantasy. And this one looks nice. It's coming out in seven weeks' time, apparently, in the middle of January. Maybe worth looking into into some more detail if you want. But another one that looks really, really interesting is Mystic Land Search for Mephaldo, I think it is. It's inspired by Wizardry 7 as well as some other similar dungeon crawlers. If you're not familiar with the Wizardry series, it's worth looking up. It's got a rich history, and it kind of inspired the JRPG drama as a whole. Not a lot of people know that. They think of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, but those games were absolutely inspired by Wizardry. They are, for the most part, first-person dungeon crawlers with turn-based combat. And you explore environments. The very first game, you were just exploring a tower... As the series progressed, you started to explore fully complete worlds, and they take hundreds of hours to complete. And this game, it's inspired by them. It's coming out quite soon. If we bring this up, you'll get an idea for it, because these sorts of games, I think they deserve better. They deserve more players. But some people see them, and I don't think they really know what they are. Maybe the devs, whoever releases these games, could do a better job of explaining what you're actually getting. I think it would bring far more people into the mix, because JRPGs are pretty popular. And these games, they, they share a lot of similarities, but also with that Western influence, where you can see your party, so you traditionally in these games do have a full party, but some people call them blobbers. Because even though you control a party, you move as a singular person like you would in a first-person Elder Scrolls game. So it is first-person, but when you get into combat, you do have your full party. The visuals, again, very old-school like some of the other games we've been looking at. But the art itself looks quite nice. It looks like a, a fair bit of work has been put into, say, the character models, the interface. I like where that's immersive. It looks like they're showing off some of those models. If we have a look at some of the area exploration, you can see an example of where you jump into combat. You can see here where we're exploring a dungeon. Different environments. You've obviously got a decaying forest, it looks like. Going into tombs, going into different caves. I will mention as well... That the developers themselves, they mentioned that this started development back in 1993. So I mentioned old school. This is legit. This has been around for a long, long time. A couple of devs were working on it. And then whatever reason, real life got in the way. They couldn't continue. And they've come back to it nearly 30 years later to finish what they started. The original publisher of the Wizardry series that I mentioned that this game's inspired by... They were called Surtech, and they were actually interested in releasing this game all the way back in the 90s. So it's got those old school roots. Hopefully they deliver. They've got a, a team of five 
working on it now, so it sounds like they're pretty committed to getting this out. And I will say there wasn't a lot of footage in the trailer, so that may be the only concerning thing when it comes to this releasing in 2024. But given they have been in the industry a long time, whether they've been doing other projects or they've just come back to developing, we'll have to see. But I'll be keeping an eye on this. Caribbean Legend. Now, there's an old RPG series called Sea Dogs. It's basically a series of pirate games. And I believe even the second or third game was actually called Pirates of the Caribbean. So they must have got that license. And they basically reshaped the series around Pirates of the Caribbean to an extent to, to get some interest from when the movie series came out. That game came out back in 2003, which was when Curse of the Black Pearl came out. And I'm surprised I haven't really heard of this series earlier because a pirate RPG, it just sounds interesting. It sounds up my alley and there's some fairly cool screenshots here. But what confused me is really just finding out what this is. I had to do a, a little bit of research on it and hopefully they can get the message across because... Caribbean Legend is a remake of one of the Sea Dogs games. And if we have a look at some video footage, it looks quite nice. Uh, again, being a remake, being a bit of a remaster of a, a 2000s 3D game, it's never going to look absolutely AAA standard. But I think it does a relatively nice job. The water looks solid. What was difficult for me was to ascertain what you're actually doing in this title. I couldn't quite work out... Are you just controlling ships and doing ship battles and the RPG elements are customizing your ship and your stats and so on? But it's apparently much more than that. There's certainly ship combat and ship exploration, but you can travel to land, travel to, to different countries, and you can explore towns, you can explore entire islands. So you do have your physical character to control outside of the ship. And looking at what the developers are doing, they did say originally that it was a remake remaster, but it sounds like they are actually putting brand new content into this game. So if unlike me, you're actually quite familiar with this series, it might be worth looking at if they do release some substantial new content. I doubt it's got a massive team. If I look at Steam, for instance, if I look at GOG, the older games haven't sold particularly well in the modern day. So I can't imagine they've got some huge team with a massive budget to heavily improve this. But if you like pirating, if you're looking for an RPG, again, in a different setting to maybe what we're used to, it seems solid. I like these early 3D games. There's just something about the simplicity of not having a million art assets that are just sitting there that you can't interact with. Outside of, say, Elder Scrolls, a lot of the time in modern games, the artists do a great job of building a world. However, you just can't interact with most of it. It's just there is scenery. You can't actually do a whole lot with it as a player. Whereas these older 3D games, it seems like you can. If something's in the world, it's there for a reason. It's for you to interact with or it has some sort of use. It's releasing in February, so depending what you know about this title, it's meant to be 200 plus hours. I'll at least be keeping an eye on it to see if it's as good as other 3D titles of a similar vein, like the Gothics and so on. Probably not as good as a, a Gothic, but it, it could be decent. Circle of Swords, I don't really know about the quality of this title and what we can expect. It's another solo dev project, but it caught my eye because it literally looks like the original Baldur's Gate. It looks like an Infinity Engine game. That was all those titles by Black Isle Studios. Some of those early Bioware games, and I don't know about the quality of the gameplay, but gee, it looks like those old games. It's very nostalgic. It's obviously a, a very ambitious to make a game like this if you are one person. And, and we can't see a whole lot of serious detail outside of a few battles from that video that was there. And it does sound like, even though they mention it's inspired by Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights, I do wonder if it's actually more like an Icewind Dale. Because they do mention that it's about the dungeon crawling, the combat. And while Baldur's Gate has plenty of that, as the name suggests, you're exploring Baldur's Gate, the full city. I don't think this game is going to have a massive city. But it will certainly have the dungeon crawling aspect. And from a nostalgic point of view, it may be fun. I thought I would just mention it just because it, it looks so similar to those old games. So maybe you want to keep an eye on it as well. The last game I'm going to mention, it's actually more of a warning than a recommendation. I saw this title, Realms Beyond Ashes of the Fallen, 
and it looks absolutely fantastic. The environments themselves, they look really, really cool. They are old school, but they just look like they've got a lot of polish. So much time and work's been put into them. It looks like tactical combat as well. If you like, say, the Divinity Original Sin games, if you're familiar with older titles like that, you, you may be seeing this and you may like what's being presented. The unfortunate news is, after doing some research, it looks like it's vaporware. It looks like it is not something that is ever going to release it was originally a Kickstarter-backed game. These days, that is sadly a red flag to me because there's been so many projects that were promised eight, nine years ago when people were looking for funding and gamers at the time, like myself, were naive. We thought, oh my God, we just give you money, you get to work, you manage the project correctly. You have to because you're such a legend. Surely nothing can go wrong. And unfortunately, everything went on with so many projects. Many of them were, were pretty much scams. Even if they didn't start out that way, uh, eventually they just ended up doing nothing. No game was released or whatever was, was absolutely a far cry from what was originally promised that it made us a little bit bitter. We didn't really want to give Kickstarter projects or, or any project of that matter where the dev is asking us for money. We didn't want to hand it over because we'd been burned so many times. This is sadly another example of that. It looks great on the surface, but the team behind it just didn't deliver. And the news I've read is that it's not even being worked on right now. Supposedly something can be worked out with the rights to the game, where maybe some devs, some of the old people involved, could get back to work on it and finish it. But until they actually show us, until something is playable, I wouldn't trust anything you read about this game. So if you see this on an RPG site or someone links it to you, be very skeptical. It's something that looks cool. I'd love to play something like this, but I don't think it's going to happen. I guess in short, I wanted to mention some of these games because going into next year, it's a little bit of an unknown what role-playing games are actually coming out. At least that's how I feel. There's obviously Dragon's Dogma 2, which could be cool, but in terms of the next Baldur's Gate 3, what are we going to be really looking forward to? I found it a little bit difficult to find titles to really get excited about. Obviously, Elder Scrolls 6, a lot of people are very skeptical these days, and it's half a decade away anyway. So I think it's going to be indie titles that we can look forward to, keep an eye on, and they hopefully give us those great new experiences that may not match a Baldur's Gate 3 in terms of scope, but we at least see a product that has been made by gamers for gamers. There's passion in it. I'm going to keep an eye on these. I hope to play more of these types of titles, whether it's Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines Prelude or it's another game from one of these other teams. I just hope they turn out great and we keep getting more of them. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.